Hi, I'm Greg Kale, and I'm here with Steve Estes Smargiasi, who chairs the Lead and Copper Rule Advisory Committee for the American Waterworks Association. AWWA recently submitted its formal comments to EPA on the Lead and Copper Rule improvements. Steve, thinking about those comments, what do you think are the biggest takeaways from the association? Greg, good to be here this morning. Um, th there's a huge number of changes between the revisions and this new improvements package. Uh, AWWA submitted about 200 pages of comments on it, but uh, I'd like to focus on really probably the most important one thing, which is that under the improvements, every system will have to replace all of their lead service lines, regardless of whether or not they have high lead levels in their sample results. So I'd like to say maybe three things about that new that one piece. One, um, AWWA is strongly in support of removing lead service lines. We really look forward to the day when there isn't any lead service line in the ground connecting our water system with anyone's home. That's going to make a huge difference from a public health and um, regulatory perspective. So having said that, there's a couple of other things I really want to emphasize. One, that it's going to be a big, big step forward. A lot of systems are well positioned to be able to meet the 10-year deadline, remove all those lead service lines. But for others, it's going to be a stretch. Resources are tight. It's not necessarily going to be easy or maybe even feasible for some systems to make that 10-year deadline. Price tag is going to be a big deal. Knowing what we know now, and we don't have all the inventories in place, but just knowing what we know, we think that's like a $90 billion uh, price tag to remove all the lead service lines. Federal government's provided some money, but not enough to accomplish all of that. So that's going to be back on our ratepayers unless there's other sources of money. And then the third thing that's really you know difficult and we commented extensively on is this question of how do we deal with the private side? Half the service line is on private property. EPA created up an approach which says access equals control. If you have access, therefore, you should be able to control the removal. But in fact, we know that the homeowner owns that piece of land that the service line is under, and we need to be able to work with them. If we can't, we're not going to be able to remove that lead service line. And that could be a sticking point for many systems. I know the proposed rule also changes the lead sampling and reporting procedures. I wonder if you could say a couple words about how you think that might impact um, how many utilities, which utilities might uh, have a exceedance to the lead and copper rule. Okay, so it, certainly a bunch of things are changing. One, obviously the action level has been lowered from 15 down to 10. That's automatically folks are going to know already if they're going to be in trouble based on that. But the other changes to sampling mark, if you've got lead service lines, 100% of your samples are supposed to be from homes with lead service lines. Typically, that's going to raise your lead levels in those samples, so you're more likely to exceed. And we now are going to be sampling both the first and the fifth liter in those homes with lead service lines and taking the higher of those two values. All of those things together mean that more systems are going to exceed. We don't think EPA really has fully documented um, and analyzed how many systems will exceed. So we know that that's going to be a case where more probably than anybody knows are going to trip over what's a new threshold, which is this 24-hour notice if you exceed the action level. Yeah, I do want to explore that 24-hour notice uh, a little bit more. I know that was part of the lead and copper rule revisions, the previous lead and copper rule, which uh, was which put in the idea of a 24-hour public notification uh, in the event of a lead, lead and copper rule exceedance. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about what that means uh, for utility? It seems like a pretty big change. It is. It's a really important communications change that we've got to work our way through. Um, so first, to be, to be clear, there's a lot of changes in the revisions and a lot of changes in the improvement. How those two rules are interact is something that AWWA is working with EPA on to make sure. But to be sure that this one piece, which is the 24-hour notice, is in the package which is effective this October, October 16th to be precise. So what does it mean? If you exceed the action level, new lowered action level, with those new sampling changes, 
you're going to need to do a 24-hour public notice. This is the same sort of notice we would do if we had a confirmed E. coli. It's broadcast. It's to everybody in your community, public media, newspaper, television, radio, that sort of thing. And it's to everyone. So why is that important? Well, we know that what we're, folks we're really trying to reach are folks who have the higher risk, those with the lead service lines. But our messaging under the rule is to everyone. So what if people need to do? They need to be prepared because this could be something that happens this year if you're sampling in the second half of the year. But you have to be prepared by working with your local health officials, your risk management people in the, in the town. I would personally say make sure the mayor knows about this before you start sampling because you don't want to be surprised and have to do this in a hurry if you're not well organized and if everybody who's going to be receiving calls doesn't know about it in advance. Yeah, a lot of work for a utility to do in preparation um, for the rule. And I know that the AWWA Public Affairs Council has an excellent lead communications guide, which is designed to help utilities strengthen public trust as the rule uh, comes into place. So um, great information. Steve, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, I think an important reminder to folks. One of the pieces of the, re the revisions, the LCRR, is the requirement to have a initial inventory of all your service lines. What's lead, what's galvanized requiring replacement, a term of art, the rule, um, and what's unknown. You need to have that done by October 16th of this year. And then once it's done, you need to provide a communication to everybody in those three categories, lead service line, galvanized requiring replacement, and unknown that describes the risk they may face. And that is an opportunity to be thinking about, well, I might exceed. So how do I use those letters that go out as a preparation for maybe organizing the high-risk homes so people know about that versus folks who are maybe not as much at risk and thinking about your overall communications plan. But that's due soon. If you're not already working on it, it's not too late, but you better get hustling because that's a regulatory yeah. requirement. Um, it's a violation if you don't submit it by October 16th. Yeah. Great reminder. Um, and I hope that you'll be available uh, for us to check in with as as the lead and copper rule improvements become final and as we help uh, utilities um, across the United States uh, implement the rule. So thanks very much, Steve. You're welcome. Good pleasure talking to you.